Welcome back to the channel. I'm guessing that what you just saw in that last clip was what you were expecting when you hit play on this video. You want to see some ab exercises. You want to feel that burn in your belly. And if that's all you want, if you want to see some exercises you can do in the gym or on the floor at home to really work your abs, I'm gonna have my video editor, Carla, put right here the timestamp where you can skip ahead and find those exercises because I'm going to show you some really effective core exercises. I think you'll regret skipping what I'm about to share with you because the exercises that I'm about to share with you are going to be things that are going to make a bigger impact on the look of your belly than simply just doing those ab exercises. I used to spend a lot of time doing ab work, like a lot. I would do those 30 minute ab classes at the gym and I would feel that burning sensation in my abs and think, yes, ah, burn belly fat, burn. But no, because you can't actually feel belly fat burning. You can't feel any kind of fat burning. Abs are muscles and you can train them. But training your abs isn't actually what's burning your belly fat. If you want a flat stomach, if you want no love handles, if you want your belly to look toned, fat burning is what you need to focus on. And that's not done with ab work. That is actually created through a calorie deficit. I have an entire video walking you through step by step how to set up your nutrition so that you are in a calorie deficit. I talked to you about number of calories, how to figure that out, your macros, carbs, fats, protein, all of that. I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description so that you can watch that video. The key is once you have a plan set up, you need to actually be able to follow that plan. And so the exercises I'm gonna be giving you here today are things that are gonna help you actually adhere to your plan. We're gonna talk about optimizing your nutrition to actually be in that calorie deficit. Exercise number one, pot stirs. No, not like that, like this. Cook more at home. Why does this matter? It helps you to be more reliably in a calorie deficit. A couple of reasons. Number one, restaurant portion sizes are outrageously large. Just that fact, if you're at home and you control your portion sizes better, it will be easier for you to stay in a calorie deficit. You could go to a restaurant and just reduce the portion size by cutting it in half, sharing it, or saving some for later. That is an option. But even then, the calories in the same food that you eat at a restaurant versus that the calories in that food at home can vary widely. If you think of things like a burger or an omelet and you see the calories in a restaurant and you make that same food at home, they can be really different. You can make it much fewer calories at home. Sneaky hidden calories are present in restaurant foods as well. Things like oil and butter and cheese and sauces, the calories add up. And you'll find that restaurant meals, though you can make it and have an easier time sticking to your calorie budget at home, eating the same foods out might mean that that one meal is taking up two thirds of your day or sometimes even your entire calorie budget for the day. This is not to say that you shouldn't eat out at all, but if you struggle to stay in your calorie deficit, if you're not losing weight and you feel like, hey, I thought I was in my calorie deficit, this is a good place to look. Look at your entire week. Think how many days do I typically, how many meals do I typically eat out? Let's see you eat out once a day for seven days. That's seven meals. Try and cut that back to six and then five and eventually have it be so you are eating way more meals at home prepared by you than in a restaurant. And these meals don't need to be fancy. I like to think of myself more as a meal assembler than a cook. You can make these things really easy. Exercise number three, you're going to exercise restraint with licks, bites, and tastes. Now, what does that mean? Going throughout your day, you likely have done this before. Most people have done this before. You nibble a little bit here and a little bit there, have a sip of somebody else's drink here, something off your kid's plate there. Where this can be a problem is when you are trying to lose weight and you're counting your calories or following some other structured way of eating, and then you kind of just don't notice all the lick biting and tasting and sipping that you are doing. What often happens, a person can get really frustrated and this might sound familiar to you. You get to the end of the day and you are in your deficit, you know it. You have logged your food and you do that over and over and you're not losing weight and you can't figure out why. When in reality, 
you were not at all counting for the fact that you did things like cleaning up your kid's breakfast mess and they have one Eggo waffle left and you eat it. And it's only like this big and you eat that and you don't think about it. It's almost like we have amnesia about this stuff. We just don't even think about it. And then at lunchtime, you're chopping up your salad. You're having your big salad. You're gonna be healthy, gonna be low calorie. And as you're chopping up your salad, you take a couple bites of avocado and eat it. Not even thinking about it. You eat those, you don't log them. Dinner time comes, you're making amazing tacos. They're gonna be low calorie, they're gonna be high protein. It's gonna be filling, it's a great meal. And as you're doing it, you're taking some bites, some nibbles out of the bag of cheddar cheese. And you've got yourself a couple tablespoons of cheddar cheese without even thinking about it. And then that night your teenage son comes home and he's gone to McDonald's and he's got some hot fries. And as you're talking to him about his day, you're nibbling on your french fries and they're delicious and you only had a couple. Now if you're thinking, Kim, surely that doesn't add up to much. If you do the math on all of that, you're over 280 calories. Look at those calories add up and they're invisible to you. So let's say your calorie target for the day was 1600 and you logged 1600 and everything else you did got you to 1600 but now you just added all of these on there. You think you're at 1600, you're up over 1800 without even knowing it and it's frustrating and you start to feel like you're broken and there's something wrong with you and a calorie deficit doesn't work for you when in reality it's the lick bite tasting thing that's got you so here's the strategy i would give you two things i would say about licks bites and tastes number one strategy is just don't do it do not nibble out of bags and packages and take other people's food look if you want some french fries get yourself some french fries have your son get you your own bag of french fries, but you gotta account for that stuff. So don't, don't do the lick biting tasting thing. Second possibility, if you are going to do it, put that stuff in your lock. If you really want that Eggo waffle when you're getting ready to throw it in the trash, like, wait, I really want a chocolate chip Eggo waffle. Look, I actually like those things. Stop, put it in your log before you eat it, and then eat it. And now it's accounted for. And now you'll know that that was just 90 calories before you move on for the rest of the day and then it's accounted for. So either don't lick, bite, and taste or account for them before you do it. Okay, this third one here, and I bet this is the first one you're gonna be like, Kim, that's the first exercise you've actually given us. We're going to be talking about burning calories here. The calorie deficit comes down to, remember, calories in being less than calories out. You need to have more calories out than you have calories in. So how can we get you to have more calories out? I bet the first thing you just thought of is, I'm hitting the gym, Cam. I don't want your mind to go there. When you're at the gym in a fat loss phase and you're strength training, that should be about you building or at least maintaining your muscle mass. It should not be about you keeping your heart rate up and getting sweaty and burning as many calories as possible. You will burn some calories doing that. I don't want you to think about like maximizing your calorie burn during your strength training workout. Now here's the other thing. How often do you really go to the gym? Let's say you're super hardcore and you go seven days a week for an hour. That's seven hours in a week, which by the way, there's no reason you should be doing that, but let's just say you were, that's seven hours in a week. Think about all the other time that you're alive, that you're not sleeping, that you're not at the gym. Do you see how there's way more hours outside of the gym than there are inside of the gym? And so we want you to be maximizing your calories burned during those times. Not the gym time, not the sleeping time, but all of the other time. All right, how do you do that? One of the best tools that can help you to really maximize your calories burned is by tracking your movement. Using a step tracker is a great tool for that. Now, when I say using a step tracker, I literally want you to track your steps. I can't get my arm turned around for you to see this. I'm wearing a step tracker. I don't want you to worry about what it says on here about your calories burned. Any kind of device, whether it's on a treadmill or an elliptical or something like this, or it's on your phone, is actually not accurate at all in figuring out the calories you have burnt. Don't pay attention to those. Definitely don't attach this or any other number with your food log and add those calories back in. You're eating up your calorie deficit if you do that. So don't worry about the number of calories burned on something like this, but do concern yourself with the number of steps you take. It is a really good way of increasing your movement and first of all just being aware of what your movement is when you move more you will burn calories more you have a lot of time in your day that you don't even realize it that you could actually be moving more and this makes a big impact on your total daily calories burnt here's what i'm going to suggest you do get yourself a step tracker it doesn't have to be an expensive one it doesn't have to be an apple watch if you like that kind of gadgetry if that motivates you go for it mine is a 
Fitbit Versa Lite. I bought it at Target. I love it. You can get, they're really cheap ones. You can get on Amazon for like 13 bucks. If you're cool with carrying your phone with you at all times, put your phone in your pocket and keep that on you. That has a step tracker. However you can do it, start tracking your steps. Do it for a week. Don't purposely increase them. Just see where you're at. So let's say you, you're getting 3,000 steps. You wanna take that and increase it by a small amount. We don't wanna make a big leap. Ideally, if fat loss is your goal, I would love to see you get up to 10 or 12,000 steps daily. Don't make that big leap up there in one fell swoop. Inch the dial up a little bit at a time. So if you're at 3,000, shoot for 3,500 or 4,000. Do that for a week or two weeks until it feels natural. Look for small pockets of time to get your steps in. There are so many ways to do this. A really good one is whenever you're on a phone call, you're up and you're moving, you're pacing in your office. If you have the capability of going outside to take a call, walk while you're on your calls. You can set periods of time throughout the day that you take a dedicated walk. Walk before each meal or walk after each meal. And it can be five minutes. It doesn't have to be like now a part of your schedule has to be a 30 minute walk. Though you could do that and you might actually enjoy that. It might be a really good stress reliever for you. You could do something like that. You could set a timer on your phone or on your watch so that every hour it reminds you to get up and walk. And when you do that, it could be something as small as two minutes. You could walk to the water fountain that is furthest from you at work get a sip of water and come back. If you're at home, you can every hour get up and walk up and down your stairs 10 times. You can go outside and walk around the block once every hour. When you go to sporting events with your children and they're practicing, get up. Do not sit on the sideline on your bottom. Get up and pace the sideline. When you uh, go to a store, walk a couple of extra laps around the store every time. Get there, walk around the perimeter twice, then do your shopping and walk around two more times before you leave. Make it a habit of moving extra. Up your steps a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Make it enjoyable. Put on a podcast. Put on music that you like. Talk to a friend on the phone. I make walking dates with my friends. No matter where they live, we'll hop on the phone and we'll talk while we both walk, whether they're you know across the street or you know across the country. So make this enjoyable for yourself and do it in small increments. Increasing that calories out means you have just made hitting your calorie deficit so much easier. Let's jump in to some ab exercises. I'm gonna share with you my favorite core exercises. I'm gonna start with a plank. I love planks. There's a plank for every ability level. So the basic plank here, if this is too easy for you, you can make it harder so many ways. You can make this plank a long lever plank by walking your feet back here, you can add a reach like this. You can make this a single leg exercise here and here you have to work on not rotating this way. So really have to fire your abs to stay in this position. You can make it even harder by taking your foot and moving it out. Another of my favorite core exercises is a single arm farmer carry or farmer walk. So you're gonna take a heavy weight and put it in one hand here. And then I want you to notice this is gonna work at the sides of your abs here, your obliques. Instead of letting the weight pull you this way, obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit, you wanna use here to stand up. So not here, here. You wanna keep this here firing, here, and you walk. If you're someone who likes a really good old-fashioned sit-up or crunch, I have a couple to show you here. This is one of my favorite sit-up varieties. It actually starts in a long lever hollow body hold. So you get in this position and up. Here and up. You can do an oblique version of this as well to target the sides of your abs. And that looks like this. So you're here, and you come up to the side. Here, and up to the side. You can stick with one side. Before switching and doing the other side. That is the oblique focused knee grab setup. All right, next exercise is a reverse crunch. These are super challenging. When you're doing these, you wanna make sure that you keep 
your heels close to your glutes. You don't want to be spreading them all the way out here. So keep your heels close to your glutes. The further away from your body that your knees are, the harder this exercise is. When you come down to the bottom in this exercise, you don't want to hang out there. You want to come right back up to the starting position. You're going to get something heavy to hold on to. You could hold on to a squat rack, a heavy dumbbell, a heavy kettlebell. The lighter the thing is, the harder it is. So start with something fairly heavy. You don't want to have like a death grip on this. Whatever you're holding though, try and hold it lightly. Okay, so here's how this exercise goes. Here is your start position. It's going to be hard for me to talk while doing this. Here's your start position. And that is a reverse crunch. One more crunch variation for you here, bicycle crunches. Now, if this is the way you typically see a bicycle crunch, <laughs> that's not how we're gonna do them here. First thing you're gonna do is keep your lower back pinned to the floor. You're gonna take your hands lightly behind your ears, not grabbing at your head, and then you're gonna move very slowly and deliberately. One leg is extended, the other one is here, and then you're here, and then here, and then here. So how often should you be training your abs? Let me tell you what you don't need. You don't need a dedicated ab workout. You can train your abs with your other workouts. Upper body day, lower body day, full body day. You can put them in there any of those times. So I shoot to give my clients two to three ab exercises. I give them two to three sets a couple of times a week. That's really all you need. You don't need to be doing 15 minute abs, 30 minute abs. Two to three exercises, two to three times a week, mixed in with your other workouts. So some of the key things I want you to remember from this video, if you're looking to have a flat stomach, it is more about nutrition than it is about exercise though exercise is still important. Your abs are a muscle, so train them, but really dial in your nutrition, really work on getting into your calorie deficit, and remember, you're gonna have to sustain that over a long period of time. I think it's also important to remember that our bodies aren't static. They look different when we sit versus when we stand. They look different sometimes you're bloated. Constantly chasing a perfectly flat stomach can be an exercise in futility and just quite frankly, in making yourself feel really bad. There's nothing wrong with a stomach that is not perfectly flat. Look, I don't have a perfectly flat stomach. And when I sit, when I, when I slouch, I have rolls. I do. So some key takeaways from this video. Ab exercises are great. Do them. If you want a flat stomach, if you want no love handles and you want um, a toned belly, your nutrition is actually the most important piece getting into and staying in a calorie deficit over a sustained period of time is what is going to give you the most bang for your buck. A flat belly is a perfectly fine goal. And if that's a goal of yours, cool, you can get there. But I would say to question yourself, what are you looking to achieve with that flat belly? What will it give you? And measure that against the checks and balances of what you have to give up in your life for that. Hit me up with questions about this stuff anytime. Lots of great ab exercises I can recommend to you. I will continue making videos on them. I'm gonna link another video in the description. I have a whole video on different plank variations, some of which I showed you today and some other ones. All right, catch you next time.